Say yes or no. Mm, yes. Okay, that's a yes. Hello and welcome back. Today, I have an assistant. I have the middle franchise of the McInnes family. This is Emmy. Do you want to wave hello? Hi. No, oh, good one. Do you want to say into the mic? Hi. There you go. Emmy's going to be joining us today and trying to. She's gonna try and learn a few things, okay? So, as usual, we got a working title here, Al. It's gonna be Endless, The Endless Mortgage Amortization. I don't know if that's what we're gonna use, but that will preface what I'm gonna go through, again, looking half at the screen. And half at you. So, today's gonna to be under 10 minutes, as usual. And we'll dive right into it to uh, speed this up. So my opening line here, these are uh, notes taken from the FCAC guideline to the FRFIs of the country, Al. What does that mean? That's what we're going to get into. So there's another little secret tip here. Can you read that number? You can read it. What are they? Just tell me what the letter, the numbers are. Eight, three, six. 836 days away, Al. What is happening in 836 days? Do you know? Do you know? No. Okay, well, we're all gonna find out shortly, but the whole premise of what I'm about to go through, in my opinion, honest opinion as usual, is that it all wraps up to day 836 from today, and that's why it's all taken place. And we're gonna get into that at the end, but, Released last Wednesday was the new guidelines to lenders aimed to protect mortgage holders from facing high borrowing costs or who are at risk of defaulting on their loans, Al. So the government is diving into your business. Again, they are, I'm not gonna say that. They're, they're here and they're paying attention. And at first glance, they want you to be all right, A-OK. -okay. So our beloved, 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 I say that with a tone, uh, Krista Freeland uh, tossed this com these comments on the back end of the grocery rebate announcement, as you may have seen last week, Al. The one that there was all that controversy that they took all the price tags off of the groceries before they stood in front of the groceries to discuss how well inflation was being managed. If you want to fast track back to that, you can. Recently announced, of course, it was originally announced in the spring budget um, where they highlighted this mortgage relief program, we're gonna call it. It was re-brought up again last week. Uh, Reuters had a comment on it July 5th, uh, highlighting Canada's financial watchdog releases guide. Is that an exhale? You bored? Canada's financial watchdog releases guidelines to give mortgage holders tailored support. Uh, some highlights from that, they said two thirds of mortgage holders are having trouble meeting financial commitments. It's a large number. Uh, people are faced with having to increase their monthly contributions or to extend amortization, which we're gonna get into shortly. That's a big part of this as pertaining back to the title, the endless mortgage amortization. Uh, and people are possibly skipping payments or extending amortization uh, offered by the banks already. So this is already taking place. So we're gonna go through the actual headline here, then we're gonna go on some meanings and what you need to know because there's a few abbreviations going on out there and then we're gonna dive right into it. FCAC means Financial Consumer Agency of Canada. That is the financial watchdog referenced earlier. Are all the financial circumstances here fair and equitable words they love to use these days to the people so this is the government body that you pay for to look over you uh, from way way high above the FCAC have developed a guideline on existing consumer mortgage loans in exceptional circumstances 
to set out its expectations for federally regulated financial institutions, FRFIs, uh, to contribute to the protection of consumers of financial products by providing tailored support to consumers at risk. Now, FCAC, as I said, financial customer Financial Consumer Agencies of Canada, that's the financial watchdog. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of them if you watch the news. Uh, you're going to hear these, uh, these abbreviations a lot in the coming weeks, I presume. FRFIs, Federally Regulated Financial Institutions, or banks, uh, and credit unions and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about the big banks today, for the most part, because that's where most people get their mortgages through. And what is negative amortization? This occurs when a consumer, what's the exact right up here? This occurs when a consumer customer, consumer, whatever, uh, with variable rate mortgage and a fixed payment. Now, not to get confused with fixed rate mortgages, variable rate, but fixed payment, meaning your payments don't change monthly, but the equation within said payment does. We've talked about that. Variable rate mortgages and fixed payment, fixed payments are no longer paying enough to cover the interest on their payments. The interest accrues plus principal and increases the total amount owing on the mortgage. So we'll go into it more at the end. Okay, so why is this happening? We're contributing to the protection of the consumer, of course, uh, of financial products and services. So in this case, mortgages, uh, by providing tailored support to the consumers at risk. So this is what the banks are have been told they have to do. And by the aboves, keeping day 836 in mind, as always. Uh, so persons, who does this apply to? Persons with existing residential mortgages on their principal residence who are experiencing severe financial stress. As a relief, as a result of exceptional circumstances and are at risk of mortgage default. Don't look at me like that. Circumstances include combined effects of high household debt and rapid increase in interest rates and increase of cost of living. So if you're applicable to any of these circumstances, they're talking to you. Who is being targeted for help? Okay, that's who. I juggled my notes here. So uh, the FCAC, the watchdog expects the FRFIs, the banks, to support customers' risk in the following ways. Those whose payments are variable rate mortgages fluctuating with interest rates, variable payment, and whose payments have increased materially. So we've all talked to people whose rates have doubled since they started bumping rates back in March 2022. How old are you? Do you want to tell them? Okay, uh, those with fixed payments on variable rate mortgages who have seen materially larger portions or all of their monthly payments allocated towards the increased interest costs and who may be facing negative amortization, as we touched on before. And the third group this is applicable to, those with fixed rate mortgages reaching near-term maturity who may be facing a material increase in payments when you re-term. That could be me, Al. I'm on a fixed rate. It's coming up in a year and a half and I might have to just dive on this little scheme here which gets a little gray and interesting as well. So how are relief measures going to play out here? So your banks may have approached you with this so far, and if they haven't, you can go to them and say, how the hell are you going to help me in my circumstance? Are you hungry? No. Okay, we'll get lunch after this. Either way. Now, uh, they're gonna be waiving payment penalties on lump sum payments towards uh, uh, your, of course, building your principal lump sum uh, payments that most mortgages are allowed to do annually. Uh, so if you are not allowed or you over lump, they're going to uh, remove those penalties. Uh, of course, with efforts for you to avoid negative amortization. Additionally, um, when you sell a property, if there may be costs involved in breaking said mortgage, those are also going to be waived. Uh, waiving internal fees and costs, L, one of these beautiful umbrella terms that said government loves to use. Not charging interest on interest. Now, this is a very interesting one that we'll get into in a little bit, um, but 
This is of course resulting from negative amortization. So my first question is what happens if interest payments alone are larger than the monthly fixed payment you have? Board? Yeah, kind, of. <laughs> kind of? Really? Yeah. Is it interesting? Or is it just boring adult stuff? Boring adult stuff. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's the worst. Okay, it's coming to an end shortly. So what happens if the interest rates are low? So you owe 2000 a month. Let's say you were 75 or 80% interest, 20% principal. And now your interest alone exceeds the total 2000 a month. Well, no principal is being paid off of, the, uh, off of the top. Plus, you've now got interest adding. So as the months go on, you're not removing interest in your, let's say, 30 year amortization plan than your five year term. Sorry, you're not removing any, uh, paying back any principal, plus your interest is layering on top. So this in my eyes from everything I've read is the only way that they're applicable to charging interest on interest, uh, which will apparently not happen. So if you're running a monthly and your interest only exceeds that monthly, my guess now is that that additional interest above and beyond is just simply not going to be charged. But still, you are not paying any principal off each month. The principal payment, uh, of course, stays owed and is not being added every month. Therefore, the amortization is building. You're not minusing it, so you're simply adding days at the front end here, which builds back to that endless amortization loop until you make more money to pay their needs as usual. Now, the FRFIs, the banks, will not offer less advantageous rates at renewal based on consumer inabilities. Now, Al, if you're paying, I'm paying 295, let's say I'm up today and I'm now at six, that's an advantageous rate. Can I go to the bank and say, this is advantageous, can I have three and a half? I don't know. But that's how it reads. So a little gray as usual when the uh, overlords are passing down their wisdom, but we'll see what happens. Uh, At-risk consumer credit reports do not reflect late payments or delinquencies, Al. So if you screw around here, scot-free, scot-free. Extending amortization. Now this is the big one. So this is where you keep your mortgage going forever and never pay it off. When amortization periods extend, extension is in order. However, they're going to try and structure the shortest amount of time possible. They're going to make sure amortization periods are reasonable. They're going to increase, sorry, include info about options to restore amortizations to original periods. That's a good one though, right? They're gonna include assessment and communication of the potential long-term negative financial impacts of this change. And they're gonna communicate all of this in a manner that is clear, simple, and not misleading. Those are the Coles notes from the write-up to the banks from the FCAC the financial watchdog. So that's where we're at. If your bank has approached you with this, I highly doubt they have, but if they have approached you already, take a seat, see what you can do. Remember way back when we got those, that free six months during COVID, you didn't have to make uh, mortgage payments, naturally extending amortization, which was definitely not gone into to this depth uh, of oversight or insight to make sure the people are, uh, are informed uh, in a manner that is clear, simple, and not misleading. But this time they're doing that. So in conclusion, what is this gonna do for the market? Um, if you can afford to pay your mortgage, you're good. If you can't, you can sell or you can talk to your bank and they'll give you one of these 5,000 loopholes. But what is this gonna do? This is gonna keep inventory low because now these people are no longer pressured to sell at a gain or a loss, but get that inventory on the market. Therefore, this is gonna keep prices high because it's a complete inventory game right now. Uh, and proving more reason for people who typically would to, uh, or giving the people who would typically would more reason not to put their properties on the market. Now, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Um, this is another fabricated market environment that we're going into. Uh, and every time the government touches and fabricates, as we know, 
uh, things get more expensive. So I don't think this is gonna change that at all. Now, this is gonna produce two outcomes. Really, it's gonna produce one outcome. 836 days, Al. In 836 days, October 20th, 2025, the 45th Canadian federal election now takes place on or before October 20th, 2025. Now, with this comfortably in place for, let's just fast forward, let's see it's October 20th right now and we're going to the polls, Al. We are making decisions to guide this country into the promised land. We have now had 836 days of pressureless mortgages. What is that gonna do? I'll tell you what that's gonna do. That is going to prevent the naysayers who are fighting the liberal cause from saying, look at all the defaults that took place based on all the stuff you guys did. They are eliminating the potential of defaults. And that is gonna give them a fantastic platform to say, look, we did everything. We handled CPI, CPI I believe was 8.2. It's currently running in at 3.4, brought that down. We put our rates up like we said we would and nobody defaulted. A perfect world. We are economic wizards. That's called wizardry, okay? They just pull it out of nowhere and it's fairy dust and then it's just a result with no substance or structure. So this beautiful protection for the current federal government to, uh, protect against defaults in their country leading up to said next election in 836 days. Amongst the other currency and inflation related issues, skyrocketing housing prices that they have done absolutely nothing to assist. You can't say, or you're not gonna be able to say, look at all the defaults you created. You guys suck. And that's that. So what do you think? Do you think they are, this is a good thing or a bad thing. Please comment below. I would love to know. I think it's, again, short-term relief for long-term pain for everyone involved. But of course, the people that are actually struggling and may have to make these tough decisions to sell, no one wants to be in that circumstance. Yes, we are all a product of said environment and economy created by, again, said overlords, but no one wants that. So obviously we all feel for the people in these circumstances and when people can use this, great. Hopefully they use this as a stepping stone to get back on their feet and back to normal. Now, how long, Al? 18. We're under 20. We're almost halfway good. Jesus. I think last week we had 15. I didn't, do you remember what? what? 254. Okay. I forgot to say that at the start. So in conclusion of episode 254, we of course have to talk about the rates. The rates were bumped up today. Today is July 12th. Today they bumped up another 0.25. I think this is the top. I'm not going to get into that conversation, but we're now at 5%. 3.4 is the CPI. I didn't look up when that next meeting was. That is the most fabricated number of all time anyway, so I don't really think it matters, but it's coming down, so let's just watch that. Um, so of course, are the rate increases helping? Well, structurally the rates have gone up and CPI has come down. However, they've increased 10 times since March 2022 now, as we know. So they've increased 10 times in 15 months. Uh, when we first got into this debacle, have you ever used that word? Never? Okay. This debacle, uh, they said rates will penetrate the market economy within six to 18 months. So we've had 10 increases in 15 months. Dare I say they have over tightened Al. I think they're trying to show strength and knowledge of what they're doing. And clearly I don't agree as par usual. Just yesterday, July 11th, CTV interviewed a woman Amin Yalan is Zayn. Amin Yalan is Zayn. Sorry if I butchered it. That was dreadful. She is apparently a senior economist for the Canadian. Well, she is a senior economist for the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives, Al. And she titled her uh, little CTV interview as, well, they titled it, Rate Hike is Coming and the Goal is to Hurt People. So, of course, they want to hit you hard. 
you don't spend, economy tones down, CPI drops, they get back to their targets, there's been no defaults, and Trudeau has just fixed the world yet again, Al. God, he's a good looking guy. That's it. Do you have anything to add, my love? No. Do you want to say hi to your sisters? Yeah. What do you want to say to them? Hi. Names? Ari Kaya? You don't remember? What? You said I... that like it was a question. Want to say anything else to them while you got them? Get their attention here? No. Okay, that's it. Episode 254 in the books, The Endless Mortgage Amortization. I have to do it like this. And that's it. Okay.